Welcome to The Tonight Show, everybody. Uh, let's get to the news and jokes. Well, guys, after two days of uh, controversy, today President Trump finally did the right thing and forcefully rejected white supremacy. Take a look. <laughs> I'm kidding. He hasn't done that at all. And as a result, Republicans are distancing themselves from the president. The president's debate performance has sparked a torrent of criticism that even his most ardent allies have struggled to contain. And Republicans on Capitol Hill are now distancing themselves from the president after he failed to disavow a far-right fascist group. There's been six months of a pandemic and now Republicans are distancing? Yep, they're really trying to distance themselves from Trump's white supremacy issue. In fact, today, Mitch McConnell brought a bill to the Senate floor to bring back the Source Awards. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's right, Republicans said this is the last straw, then tomorrow they'll be like, oh, we found a bunch more straws. <laughs> Turns out all these uh, controversies are causing the president's biggest supporters to experience Trump fatigue. I think it might be true. Today, when Trump called into Fox and Friends, Steve Ducey was like, ah, just let the machine get it. Well, I only have to talk for 45 minutes. It just said, you know, what do you want to say? What do you do? You, what do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get away from Trump, though? It's like dealing with a bear. Do you run? Do you act big? Do you play dead? No one knows. That's right. Republicans are finally stepping up to say it's not OK to publicly support white supremacy more than seven or eight times. Tops. Eight isn't. Eight is enough. <laughs> well, earlier today, John Roberts from Fox News tried to give the White House a chance to clear things up and denounce white supremacy, but Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany had a tough time with that. Watch this. Just to clear it up this morning, can you, naming it, make a declarative statement that you denounce, that the president denounces it? I just did. Uh, the president has denounced this repeatedly. The, the you, president was asked this. You're you just, making, you're contriving no, a story. No. Yeah, Trump's like some sort of mythical troll. You got to ask the same question three times before you get the answer you're looking for. There's only one way to reveal the answer. <laughs> Say the question, but in reverse. <laughs> The only way they're going to condemn white supremacy is if you sneak it into Trump's teleprompter the way you sneak medicine into a dog food. And then we're going to, I do not support white supremacists. Bring back football. <laughs> After that exchange, Roberts didn't hold back how he was feeling. This is real. Take a look at this. And for all of you on Twitter who were hammering me for answering that, for asking that question, I don't care because it's a question that needs to be asked. And clearly, the president's Republican colleagues a mile away from here are looking for an answer for it, too. So stop deflecting. Stop okay. blaming the media. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Even Fox News is fed up with Trump. That's like HGTV telling the Property Brothers to take their tight jeans and near beards and beat it. <laughs> I hope that becomes a thing, man. <laughs> After Monday's tax bombshell, Tuesday's debate debacle, and Wednesday's white supremacy disaster, Trump seemed pretty down at last night's rally. That's actual audio. That's real. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yes, of course. The classic YMCA dance. Clapping, pointing, and drawing a circle with your finger. <laughs> One, two, three, it's fun to stay. Right after that uh, dance, white supremacists forcefully rejected Trump. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. Trump is in so much debt, pretty soon he'll be staying at the YMCA. <laughs> uh, after watching that, it's clear that if the presidency doesn't work out, neither will Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. It was a nice moment. Trump was having fun. The crowd was having fun. The coronavirus was having fun. <laughs> 
You know what? Forget the next debate. Let's just make it a dance off instead. God. <laughs> Such a good move. <laughs> Everyone is still talking about the debate. Oh my God. Well, except for Rudy Giuliani, who's talking about the debat. <laughs> Amazing. You can't even tweet about the debate without Trump interrupting you. Trump might be right. Rudy might be right, because I don't think you can legally call what happened a debate. <laughs> Not sure where Rudy was going with this one. He's either got something to say about the debate or he's looking for D batteries. But Giuliani. <laughs> We're still on the air. We're still on the air. That's the good news. But I, actually, Giuliani quickly noticed and followed that up with a oops, my ba. <laughs> my ba. He's afraid of uh, the last letter. Yeah, I got it. The guy is doing Trump's uh, debate prep. He can't spell debate. It's like getting a text from your surgeon that says, can't wait for your surgery. <laughs> Some more news from Washington. It just came out that the White House and the CDC have been clashing over how to handle cruise lines during the pandemic. Take a look. The CDC is extending its ban on cruising from U.S. ports through the end of this month. Axios is reporting the CDC's director wanted to extend the order until February, but Vice President Pence overruled him. Even the cruise ships know it's a bad idea. For a six-day trip, they tell you to pack for nine months. <laughs> It'll be a while. Uh, yeah, the White House overruled the CDC on the current cruise ship ban, which might explain this new ad I saw. Are you ready to get out of your apartment? Yes. Are you tired of your same old pandemic routine? Oh, yeah. Then join us this November for a Carnival Cruise. Wait, what? Dive into a pool filled with kids swimming in diapers. Do I have to? Share a wet mic at a karaoke lounge. Why? Dig in, hands first, at our delicious buffet. <laughs> Is this a trap? Carnival Cruise, just a few liability waivers away from setting sail. Uh, well, this isn't good. The highest court in Ireland just made a pretty shocking ruling. Listen to this. Ireland Supreme Court has ruled that the bread served at Subway restaurants can't legally be defined as bread. Subway's <laughs> bread contains five times the qualifying limit of sugar. Man, all this time I thought it was healthy to eat a meatball parm on 12 inches of honey bread. <laughs> Why am I getting weight? After the ruling, Subway was like, Phew. they didn't say anything about the meat. <laughs> It wasn't just bread. The court also said, and by the way, stop calling the guy making my sandwich an artist. <laughs> that wasn't true. I made that. That was a joke. <laughs> also, what's going on in Ireland where that made it to their highest court? <laughs> Our highest court is about to argue over health care, and Ireland's arguing over sandwiches. Can we live there? Then the justices were like, and next on the docket, are Taco Bell's tacos actually tacos? <laughs> That's one of my Irish accents, but this, yeah. this one, I, what I do is it's the out of breath Irish accent. But can, you, can you do the Irish accent? Sure. Do it. Like say, tacos, Taco Bell's aren't tacos. Taco Bell's aren't tacos. <laughs> it's not Irish. I don't know who you sound like, but it's not Irish. But but now just do it, but run out of breath. Like, okay. Hot tacos. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a. I, I'm not a dialect coach. I don't, what, what, what am I? What am I doing? What am I doing? I apologize. I apologize. Your Irish. Your Irish accent sounds more Jamaican to me. You never go to Jamaican. I mean, I mean, talking like that, you get to jerk chicken. <laughs> That's not real jerk chicken, there. I love it. Ole. Uh, I saw that a company in the UK is testing a new way to speed up paramedics' response time. This is cool. Watch this. You could be looking at the future of emergency aid in this simulation from the UK. The paramedic with a medical kit could quickly respond to people in a jet pack. The suit has too many engines on each arm and one on the back. 
Right now, that guy's currently hovering over 50 Carnival cruise ships. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quick. All paramedics have to do is get in the suit, put on the gloves and the helmet, strap on the jetpack, make sure it has enough fuel, walk out to an open field, take off, and slowly fly their way over. And don't worry, there's also a second paramedic trailing behind for when the first paramedic crashes. I'm just messing around. If there's one thing we know, jet suits never fail. And it starts right now. Oh, oh. <laughs> classic. Pulling out the classic, man. Uh, uh -huh. So on and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's so